We find out more and more every day that there has been some cool stuff that has been scrapped from the various Pokemon games. Most of the time it all seems to be cut for a good reason, seemingly it just wasn't up to snuff for what the developers wanted out of the final game, but inevitably there are bits and pieces of cut Pokemon content that are so cool and so fascinating that it leaves fans wondering why it was cut at all. Going along with that, in today's video I am going to be discussing cut content from every generation of Pokemon that I would revitalize and bring back from the grave if I was in charge. The only disclaimer here is that I'm not allowed to simply pick the cut Pokemon from any given generation, because frankly, if that was allowed, that is all I would be picking, since they're easily the coolest part about cut content that exists. Still though, there are plenty of other things that would be worth having back as well, so why don't we go ahead and discuss that right now. From Generation 1, the thing that I would bring back are illusory monsters. Now, if you haven't heard me talk about this one before, basically the concept of illusory monsters are what legendary Pokemon became. Super rare Pokemon that are really hard to catch. The main difference though with illusory monsters is that other than being able to find more than one of them, the difficulty of catching them was ramped up to the max. It was said during the earliest stages of Pokemon's development that illusory monsters would be in the most remote parts of the overworld, and they could take as long as two hours to find and catch. Now, that sounds like a challenge that any aspiring Pokemon master would love to take on, but especially in comparison to how legendary and mythical Pokemon are nowadays where they just give them to us, it sounds like paradise. So if I could ever just consult Junichi and the rest of the boys on this, I would tell them to ditch gifting mythical Pokemon, just throw that in the garbage, and give us some super challenges where we gotta travel all over the region playing the ultimate game of hide and seek with these legendary. Pokemon. In this day and age, it could even be set up as a free update or event like we see done for Gigantamax Pokemon, and overall I just think that would be a ton of fun. Gen 2 is one that I would have easily picked the Pokemon if I hadn't imposed that rule on myself, because we have seen so many cut Pokemon from Gen 2 lately. But otherwise, there is still something I would love to revive, and that is the original Johto region. If you didn't know, when the 1997 Space World demo of Pokemon Gold and Silver leaked a couple years ago, it unearthed the original shape of the Johto region that was vastly different to the final game. You see, since Gold and Silver were originally planned to be the last Pokemon games, Game Freak were going in on these titles, and I mean all in, because Johto was originally going to be based on all of Japan outside of the Kanto region, instead of just the Kansai region like it is in the final. The map for this original build of the region is massive, so massive that there are even early versions of a couple of cities from Sinnoh that can be found, namely Canalave and Snowpoint City. As someone whose favorite feature in Pokemon still to this day is being able to travel to two regions, a huge map like this to explore would be a dream come true. And even though it couldn't be brought back in the exact same way, since you now have Hoenn and Sinnoh occupying parts of Japan, I would absolutely make a game where you could go to all of the Japanese based regions, and I think Game Freak should really do the same. My pick for Gen 3 is especially interesting because it concerns this mystery girl with blue hair that is seen riding on Latias and Latios. We first see her in an early piece of concept art, riding a Pokemon that didn't even make the final games that is a combination of Latias and Blaziken. By the time the games had released though, we saw another piece of art featuring another girl who looks extremely similar to the first one, riding Latios this time around. Considering their visual similarity and the fact that both of them are riding on one of the Eon duo, I would bet that they are the same person at different points in development. But who exactly is she? Despite seeming really important and appearing in a piece of promo art for the final games, she still went unnamed and never appeared in the games at all. She seems to be tied to Latias and Latios, which tells me that not only was she most likely planned to be in the game, but was likely going to be an important character too. 
In fact, her former role of riding on Latias and Latios could even be what inspired the Soar mechanic with the exact same Pokemon in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So all indicators are that she was an integral character originally, but was cut for some unknown reason. I would definitely love to bring her back, even if it was just to find out who she really was, because she seems like she would have added a lot to the plot of the Gen 3 games. Gen 4-wise, while it's not cut Pokemon, it is cut Pokemon forms. If I could, I would bring back all of the gender differences that were cut from Diamond and Pearl and recently leaked online, if for no other reason than just because it's really cool that this feature was so much more widespread originally. While we did still get gender differences in Gen 4, it did not affect most Pokemon, but as this leak shows, it was originally planned to. Vast amounts of Pokemon were shown to have gender differences originally, and for the feature to be on this large of a scale is something that I can't help but respect and yearn for for it to be an actual thing, even if I do get why it was cut. I think this could have messed with the marketability for a lot of Pokemon if they all had two forms, and could have confused a lot of people, not to mention it would have added a lot of work to future games, essentially doubling the amount of sprites and models required to include both male and female variants. So it makes sense why it never saw the light of day, but it's pretty stinkin' cool either way. My pick for Gen 5 comes out of Black and White 2, and it's the matter of Hilbert and Hilda being included in the Pokemon World Tournament. There is text in the data of the games that shows they were originally going to make an appearance and be battleable, and I just want to know why the heck this was taken out at all. I don't know about you guys, but when it came to Hilbert and Hilda in Black and White 2, and how they were passively mentioned as these legendary figures, it gave me a real red from gold and silver type of vibe, which is probably what they were going for since Gen 5 is a reboot of Gen 1. So naturally, you would think that would have been topped off by you actually getting to meet them. But no, you never do. The fact that they were cut from the Pokemon World Tournament makes it even worse because that is purely a side activity that has no real bearing on the plot, so it's not like it would have shook things up tremendously to have them in there, and it would have been a really cool payoff after hearing everyone talk about them in the game, and like the whole red situation would have been cool to basically battle your former self from black and white if you have played those games before. So yeah, given the context of everything, I just don't see why it was cut, and it wouldn't have made the game as a whole any different, so I'm not sure what the harm would have been, but if I could have had a talk with Game Freak back then, I would have said, no, you leave that alone, you leave that right there, Junichi, just leave it alone, leave it in the game, just stay away from it, don't take it out, it's cool, just leave it alone. So again, I'm not allowed to say cut Pokemon as my blanket pick, but that doesn't mean I can't pick one individual Pokemon, right? Wait a minute, why am I asking permission? It's my video. The thing that I would want to bring back from the days of Generation 6 is Mega Flygon. I could talk about a certain game that uses the last letter of the alphabet in its title, but I think if I mention it again too soon, I'm liable to be punched in the face, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go with Mega Flygon. It was stated by Ken Sugimori that they had plans for a Mega Flygon to be an X and Y, but he got artist's block at the time and just could not figure out a design he liked well enough, so it was scrapped. Now, this would suck for any Pokemon, but it especially sucks for Flygon, because Flygon is one of the most popular Pokemon ever. The Mega Evolution could have also been a Bug Dragon type, which is a type everyone has wanted for forever, and Flygon basically got robbed of itself. And to top it off, we ended up getting Mega Slowbro in Oraz, which is basically just Slowbro getting eaten, and I mean, call me optimistic, but I don't think whatever Sugimori had cooking for Flygon could have been any worse than that. It's just a darn shame all the way around, and I would definitely be bringing it back if I had any say so. Now, the more recent into Pokemon's history we get, naturally the less we have to work with in terms of cut content. So I have a bit of a different pick for Gen 7, but it's also a fun one. When Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were on the way and about to be released, it was stated in an interview with IGN by one of the developers that Let's Go had initially utilized a photorealistic style for its graphics, before switching to the style they actually used, which they felt fit the vibe of the game better. I don't think I really have to 
to explain this one too much because I think the words Pokemon, photorealistic, and graphics are something almost everyone has wanted to come together basically since the beginning of time. And even as someone who has been on record saying that I love Let's Go's art style and I think it fits Pokemon perfectly, I would have, uh, yeah, I would have wanted to see this one. Yeah, this one would have been really cool. At the end of the day, I totally get why they didn't go down this road, but my goodness, Game Freak, if you don't pull that one out of the vault and use it in a future game, I'm gonna have to do it for you, and uh, that would actually be really inconvenient for me to have to fly all the way to Japan and stuff, so uh, if you could hop on that and do that, I would really appreciate it. Okay, thanks. And from what little we know about what was considered for Sword and Shield, considering Gen 8 is still so new, I would have to choose the possible real-time battle system that was to be implemented in the game. Planning director Kazumasa Iwao spoke with Game Informer in an interview and talked about how there were internal discussions at Game Freak of possibly going away from turn-based battles for these titles, which realistically can only mean real-time battles would be the replacement, and you know, I know some people might feel differently, but that is something that I would really like to see. I know it would flip the metagame on its head and take out a lot of the current strategy from battles, but in my opinion, the gameplay would be enhanced exponentially, where not only are you getting to act in real time, but you're also actually getting to play as your Pokemon. I don't think anyone can argue that that would be pretty dope, and personally, I don't know that I'll have to bring this one back from the dead on my own after all, because this is something that I feel could legitimately happen in a new game someday. If not, though, it's definitely on my wish list of things to bring back. Well, that is all the cut content from every generation that I'd like to bring back in the Pokemon games. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new, and check me out on Spotify if you like Pokemon remixes. I also have my Pokemon Cardinal project that I would recommend if you'd like to support the channel more, and with that said, I will be back with another video on Saturday. Hit the notification bell so you can know when it goes live, and until then, as always, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later.